God, that's some good stuff we've had so far. And we had started off great, thinking about Calvary, and of course, he's living. Come on now. It's just been good. Thank you so much. Hey, get to your Bible in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, and uh, we're going to read just a couple verses, 41 and uh, 42. And the Bible said, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Father, thank you so much again for the great privilege to be able to come now and to teach and preach your word. Would you just help me, dear God, to share with your folks what you want to do with our church. And Lord, of course, what you want to do with any church. And of course, that is for us to work together, do things together, make dear God a place where we worship you together. So would you help us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, please, you can mark it down, you can write it, or you can turn to it real quickly. And that's Ecclesiastes chapter number four. As soon as I said Ecclesiastes, some of you said I'll write it down. <laughs> chapter, four, chapter four in verse number nine. The Bible says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, uh, uh, if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him up. Again, verse 11 says, and if, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Last verse, I'm going to read. Verse 12, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not equally broken. And most of us, of course, we, we, we deal with that. Many of us preachers, we deal with that, of course, trying to help couples together and stuff, trying to help them understand how much easier it is and how much better it is uh, when couples, of course, are working together and living together and striving together and serving together. But I want you to look at this thought that God has given us today when it comes to a church. We are all better together. We're better together. And I need you to understand something. God intended for it to be that way. Now, I'm talking about the church, but just think about, again, all those other things that you and I could think about, again, our marriage and stuff and our friendships and things. Think about how friendships, when they fall apart, how, again, our lives really start falling apart. Maybe because we just get mad and angry with one another. And God says it's better to do things together. Somebody say amen. And today, I just want to help you to understand, as a church, We'll better if we work together. We'll do more for the Lord if we do it together. Amen. As a matter of fact, write some verses down if you don't mind. Matthew chapter 28, the Bible says in verse number 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. I want to ask you a question. What do you think would do, be, be better? I think it would be better if we worked together doing that instead of just having maybe a preacher or maybe a Sunday school teacher teach come on help me now i think better is together amen we're better together write this down mark chapter 16 verse 15 and by the way all of these verses that i'm reading to you right now jesus gave them to his disciples he didn't give them just one he didn't give it to just peter or just james or just john he gave it to all of them and you find out when the church came together he expected the whole church to be doing stuff together why because we're better together amen Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Was well, he expecting one disciple to do that? I don't think so. Uh, I, matter of fact, I don't think he was just expecting a couple. Of, I think he was looking for all of them to do it. Why? Because we're better together. Amen. Here's another one. Luke chapter 24. Luke, tw Are you still with me? Amen. I'm talking fast. I hope you'll listen fast and then we'll shout fast. Come on now. Luke chapter 24 and verse number 47 and 48. The Bible says, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Now, wait a minute. We got to get to all nations. We're starting in this place, going out everywhere. And you know what? We'll be better together. And he says in verse 48, and ye are witnesses of these things. What? What Christ has done. How he died, how he was buried, how he rose again to take care of all of our sins. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm trying to tell you we are better. Yes. Amen. Now you're getting on it. Luke, uh, John chapter 20, if you don't mind. John chapter 20 and verse 21. John 20, 21. Then said Jesus to them again. To them again? Yes. Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. He's talking to them. He's trying to tell them. I want you all to get together and go do this thing. Why? Because we're better. 
Amen. Last one, you know it, Acts 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power, this is him talking to his disciples, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Not one could do that, not two could do that. Guess what? All of them need to be getting involved in that. Why? Because they're better together. So write some things down here by way of introduction. You say, preacher, I thought that was introduction. No, that was just some verses. Now it's introduction time. What do you want us to write down, preacher? I want you to understand something here. We are better when we gather together. I said we are better when we gather together. See, God, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but God wants the church to get together. Amen. He wants the church to have service together. You know, so many times people say, well, you don't have to come to church to be saved. Nobody ever said that. But a church works better together. And what we got to do is we got to learn to gather together. So you know what that means? Why don't you just take the rest of this year and why don't you just say something like this here? I am not missing church just because I don't want to be in church. If I miss it, it's because I'm going to be sick or I've got something that I have to do. Maybe I have to go to a funeral somewhere at another location. But if I don't, I'm going to gather with my friends, my brothers, my sister in Christ. Amen. Why? Because if we gather, we're better Amen. Watch this now. You got to get this one. Not only do we need to make sure we're going to gather together, we're better when we gather together, but we're better, listen now, when we grow together. We get on one accord. We, 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 don't, we don't have all of this here doctrine from this corner and doctrine from that corner. Amen, somebody. That's why we got to gather together so we can be on one accord when we start learning together. Amen. So can I ask you a question? Do you think it's better for us to just get into our little corners and then come out fighting over? What? No, we don't do that. We come together and we learn what thus says the Lord so we can apply what thus says the Lord so we can become what thus says the Lord want us to be. Hey, we are better when we grow together. Amen. Amen. So I want to gather together. I want to grow together. But here's a good one I hope you'll get. I, we are better when we go together. We're better when we go together. Have you ever seen or have you ever felt this even? That when you get ready to go soul winning and you don't have a partner, it kind of deflates you. I think Jesus knew something about that. The best soul winner I know was Jesus. And now he went to the well and met a woman. But guess what? He never told his disciples to do that by themselves. So guess what? If you and I would decide something, we'll gather together so we can grow together, so we can go together, we'll be better. I think you're catching on. God is just trying to teach us something. Something's missing in the local New Testament church today. As a matter of fact, most people, they'll come to church, but they don't know anybody in the church. You and I need to decide something here today. If I don't know your name, I'm going to seek you out and find out what your name is. Now, you may, not, you may be like me. You may be somebody who has to be told your name a hundred times. But if I ask you a hundred times, it's because I want to know a hundred times. Why? Because I want to get it down inside my heart and in my head so we can be better together. Amen. I may ask you, when I ask you your name, what are some of your prayer requests? What are some of the things on your heart? What's going on in your mind? And I know some of you are good at it. But let me just be honest with you here. Some of you are good at just knowing the ones you know. Right, right, right. That's true. Amen. I'll be honest. Now, listen to me. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest and say, I have to keep saying, that's Miss Sharon's granddaughter. Miss Sharon's granddaughter. That's Miss Sharon's granddaughter. What's your name? Madison. See, I really did know that. But I didn't want to mess it up while everybody looking at me. But the truth is, again, sometimes you can't get to everybody. But, but sometimes you just have to stop. You just have to talk a little bit. And you don't, matter of fact, don't, don't talk about everything going on in your life. Find out what's going on in somebody. Come on, somebody. Why? Because you and I are trying to get together because we're better. Oh, right, man. Oh, so write some things. Are you still okay? Say amen. When we get together, guess what? When we get together and we're better together, it calls an increased emphasis on evangelism. What happens when we get together? There's an increased emphasis on evangelism. 
The disciples, boy, I wish they had time to go all the way back to the upper room and them praying and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes down upon them. But I want you to get down to verse 41. The Bible says, and, and of course Peter stands up and preach. You'll see that in verse 14. And the Bible says in verse number 40, well, let me just say, Peter standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them. He started preaching. Man, I'm telling you what, you can't get a preacher with a crowd without him saying something. If he's a preacher and, 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 and if he gets a crowd and he don't say something, he's a mighty pole preacher. Come on, somebody. And, and you say, preacher, I just don't believe that. Let me tell you something here. When they would say, anybody want to say something, I go, Pre -pre preacher, you got something you want to say? You say, what do you say? Sometimes it was just hello. Sometimes I've even gone over to the Bible college and they say, come up here and tell us something here. And I say, I just tell them, I say something. You say, preacher, what in the world is that? I know that I got to cut down the times. So they just being nice and they just being polite. But if they ever tell me, open up the word of God. Whoa, amen. Yeah. I got something I got to say, amen. Yeah. Say, preacher, what would you talk about? I think talking about Jesus is a good thing. Yeah. Notice what the Bible says here. Peter got up, he started preaching. He started, he started going through everything that, of course, that God had laid on him through the Holy Spirit. In verse 40, it says, with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this unto word generation. Now watch our verse here. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Somebody say amen. amen. Boy, when we get together, there's going to be an outbreak of evangelism. Evangelism. Amen. Amen. And we've got to take and make sure that our outbreak is a right outbreak. Yeah. Write these things down under this emphasis or this increased emphasis on evangelism. You and I need to start saying, dear God, help me to help birth disciples. Yeah. Help me to help birth disciples. See, the truth of the matter is this. We're not, again, we, we don't give life. We don't really win a soul. But there's nothing wrong with trying to help a birth a disciple. Amen. We lead them to Jesus Christ. But notice the Bible said, then they that gladly received his word. So people gladly received his word. Now, here's how you and I are going to work together doing this. We're better together. First of all, we're going to help people to understand that they are sinners. You say, preacher, you've been telling us that. I know, but they are sinners in need of forgiveness. Yeah. See, a lot of times you tell people, you start saying, do you know you're, yeah, 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 yeah. They even tell you what they've done. But they need to get to a place where they realize this here. I'm a sinner in need of forgiveness. Somebody say amen. I'm a sinner in need of forgiveness. Next is, I, 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 I'm a soul that needs cleansing. You want to help them to understand that. I'm a sinner who needs forgiving. I'm a soul that needs cleansing. And watch this here. I can't forgive myself and I can't clean myself. I, 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 I need to, lay man, somebody. I need to take and, and, and share with them that God wants to do something for them that they can't do. I know Brother Jason and Brother Mike, they love it. That's that book on done. And guess what? It's not what we do. It's what he's done. Amen. He has forgiven us of sin. He has cleansed our soul. Now watch this now. And he has changed our status. Amen. I'm no longer hell bound, but I'm heaven bound. Amen. I'm bound, oh wait, I'm bound for the kingdom. Praise God. Amen. Here's what God is saying. That should happen when we get together. But a lot of times when people get together and you start talking about reaching the lost for Jesus Christ, sometimes they say, there they go again. What's wrong with going there again? Somebody say amen. What's wrong with preaching it again? What's wrong with telling folks they're sinners in need of a savior again? Nothing wrong with it. And that should be the natural outbreak when we get together. Amen. Not only do there need to be the birthing of disciples, but here's another thing, because many of us, when it comes to the Great Commission, many of us don't realize it goes beyond just birthing. Yeah. Next thing is baptizing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Baptizing. Notice what it says in verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. They received his word were? Received his word were? Now, now, this is important because let me just help you with something real quick. A lot of times when you start talking to people about baptism, they start saying, oh, 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 I don't know about that. Oh, I don't know about that. And the truth of the matter is this here. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. As a matter of fact, you'll never find in the word of God where baptism is associated with your salvation. Now, one time when you find God saying that you got to be baptized in order to be saved. Matter of fact, all you got to do is believe. Amen. Yeah. 
But notice something in your word when you go reading through it. You won't find in your word people who finally believe not willing to be baptized. You don't find people who not who finally believe said, I, no, I don't want to do that. No, I'm not willing to. Now, there's some people who were never baptized in the word of God, but you don't find people in the word of God saying, oh, no, baptism. Oh, no, I don't want to get wet. Oh, no, I don't want to take and go into. Oh, no. Even my wife, when she got saved, she was willing to be baptized. And when she got baptized, let me tell you something. She came up out of the water and she said, I did that. You say, preacher, why is that so miraculous? Because my wife don't like water over her head amen my wife and I were in the water in Bermuda and the water was coming over my head she jumped up on my shoulder she said it could be over your head but not my head amen but when she got it right with God and she got saved hey guess what she went down in that water she let me take her down and bring her back up and she said did I do that yes because believers are willing to be baptized amen it's time for time out for all of this stuff. Trying to tell people, you don't no, you don't you don't need to do that. No, you don't need to do that for salvation. But if you say you are a believer, you and I want to do that because it's what God wants us to do. Amen. Let me help you again. This an emphasis, uh, increased emphasis on evangelism, the birthing disciples and the baptizing them. Matter of fact, listen to it in Acts chapter 8. You still with me? Say amen. The Bible says in Philip, verse number 30, Philip ran thither to him, verse 30 through 38. And he heard him read the prophet and say, saying, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shears, he opened not his mouth. He, so opened he not his mouth. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare this, his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip said, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture to preach unto him Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Just tell them to read it is no good. They need to learn to understand it. Amen. amen. Verse 36, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? In other words, Philip explained it to him. And even the Ethiopian eunuch said, well, I think the next step must be baptism. And here's what Philip said. If thou believest that with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the chariot to stand still. And when it stood still, he said, I don't know what you're stopping this chariot for. I ain't getting down. And that water. No, it said they do down both into the water. And Philip and the, and, the, and, the, and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Somebody say amen. amen. See here's what God is saying. It's time for us to help people to understand. You are taking a stand amen. when you follow in believers' baptism. Amen. amen. So we get them birthed them. We take and baptize them. Number C, under this first point, we try to build them. The church, when we take and listen to me now, there's an increased emphasis on evangelism, brother Mike, and evangelism not just making them. Evangelism is marking them and then maturing them. So that's the reason why we got to get friendly with people. We got to draw them in so they want to grow. Amen. Now understand something. This is something that's done intentionally. Let me say it again. Intentionally. It's not an accident that people grow in the Lord. It's something done intentionally. And it's something done systematically. I said systematically. I mean, this ain't no chaos. This is no haphazard. This is no accident. This is something that's done intentionally and systematically. We go verse by verse sometimes. Sometimes we take a topic. Sometimes we just take something like a special day. But we teach them the word of God. I didn't watch this now because this is what most of us don't get. The Bible teaches us that when it comes to building disciples, it's intentionally, systematically, and numerically. I'm so sick and tired of people saying, all you worried about is numbers. You're right, and God put a whole book called Numbers. <laughs> a whole book, and by the way, and so I can get off of this here point, verse 41, the same day they were added unto them about, if God not concerned about numbers, why did he tell us how many got saved? How many followed in baptism? How many were added to the church? Because God is not upset, upset when a church builds its numbers numerically. Amen. Amen. 
build the church numerically. So God is saying, I need for you to take and put an emphasis, an emphasis on evangelism. How about this number next? There's an intentional emphasis on education. We're better together. And there's got to be an intentional emphasis on education. Look at verse number 42, if you don't mind. We're almost done. We're almost done. Just hang in there. The Bible says in verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. So here's some things I want you to get. The Bible said they continued. They continued. They continued. In order to continue, I think what they had to do was get devoted. What's missing today in the local church? Devotion. I'm not talking about having devotion, but being devoted. To making sure we gather, that we grow, and that we, come on now. God said we've got to take and get serious about this thing. And by the way, can I just help you with something? If we do begin to gather, and if we do begin to grow, and if we do begin to go, and if we do begin to birth, and we do begin to baptize, and we do begin to build some people, somebody's got to get in on this teaching part. Amen. Amen. And by the way, you don't, we don't teach what we want to teach. We'll get to that in just a moment. But first of all, here's what you and I have got to do. We've got to get devoted. Amen. Let me just kind of help you to say, so some of you will understand. You are devoted. You're devoted to something. You're devoted to your families. You're devoted to your friends. You're devoted to taking and getting the future. You're devoted to your finances. You're devoted to some people to take and have in a, a, a hunk of a flesh. By the way, I'm devoted to having a hunk of a flesh. I got a hunk here and a hunk here. And, amen. <laughs> Praise God. I'm devoted to it. Amen. I don't want to lose any of it. Come on, somebody. But God is saying, we got to get devoted to where we say, I'm coming. They continue, they continue, they continue. Write it down, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. You say, preacher, what are you trying to do? I hope you'll continue by coming to Sunday school. Yeah. You say, now, preacher, we have just preaching time. Well, come to the 9 o'clock preaching time. But we do have Sunday school for those that are in, 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 in K through 12. Yeah. Hey, man. We got to grow them. We got to help them. And so I hope you would say, I'm getting devoted. I'm not missing church. I'm not sitting out. There is, listen to me now. We are devoted to stuff, and we need to be devoted to the house of God as much as we are to all the other things in life. We'll come up with anything to get out of it. Now, again, I know people get sick. I know people get sick. But the truth of the matter is, some people just get sick and tired of coming to church. Hebrews 10, 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good work, not forsaking the assembling ourselves together as the manner some is. You know what God just said? Some people miss church right now. And they don't have a real good excuse. But they say, but we're going to do exhorting one another and so much the more as you see that they approach. If we always talking about he's coming back real soon, God said you should want to come to church a little bit more. Hey, amen. So first of all, there needs to be devotion. Yeah. Second of all, look at this thing here. Are you still with me now? I'm talking about this intentional emphasis on education. So you got to get devoted to get here. And then next thing is this here, discipleship. Discipleship. Let me just kind of look at it and say, and they continue steadfastly. Steadfastly. Let me just help you understand what that, what that really means here. They, they can see you uh, to be disciples because they were disciplined. We say discipleship. We say disciples. But guess what? It all boils down to disciplined. How many of you get upset when your kids aren't disciplined to do what you told them to do? Come on now. God says you and I, we're better together when we all get disciplined and making sure we get here steadfastly continuing to get into the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. So you and I need to understand that a lot of us, we have some stuff we say, I won't do it. I know we have some things we say, I don't do it. But God says to us when it comes to discipline, discipleship, he says, how about Will you do it? Won't you do it? For me, come on now. 
Bible says, and again, remember now, we're not doing this just because a preacher told us to do it. We're doing it because this is how our church works better. Number three, or C, underneath this point, the intentional emphasis. What's that? Not only on devotion, not only on discipleship or discipline, but how about on sound doctrine? That's where we're at now. The Bible said they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's not just any old doctrine. That, that's not on any, as a matter of fact, there's a whole lot of doctrines out there. You can go find a cult with a doctrine. You, they, they, they even call them manifestos now. That's their doc. Come on now. Here's what we believe and here's why we do it. So here's what God is saying. I need you to come and get facts and not fiction. Let me say it again. I need you to come and get facts and not fiction. What do you mean by that, preacher? Here, understand this here. When I say facts and not fiction, I'm saying this here. We can't have any ideals or anything we call truth, anything about God that does not, is not supported by God's word. Let me say that again. You and I can't do anything or have anything about God that's saying that this is what God says, okay, without support from the word of God. So oftentimes people will say stuff like this here. Well, I, I, I think God's word says, no, God's word doesn't say it. Amen. Amen. But we come up with a way to twist it and to make it fit. Why? Because we were at one time saying, here is sound doctrine. Now it doesn't fit my life. So here is sound doctrine. No, God's word does not change. If it was real and right before, it's real and right right now. Amen. And you can look at whatever you want to. If God said it over here, God means it's still over here. Amen. And if you preached it and if you taught it and if you lived it over here, it's time to keep doing it over here. Amen. Amen. But what most of us do is, again, we come up with our own way. Reminds me of the Baptists and the Methodists. They were talking about who knew more truth, more doctrine. And the Baptist said, I know more than you do. And the Baptist said, no, I know more than you do. And the Baptist said, no, I know more than you do. Of course, the Methodist said, no, I know more than you do. And the Baptist said, okay, I'll tell you what. I guarantee you, you don't know the Lord's Prayer. And he said, I know the Lord's Prayer, and the Methodist did. The Baptist said, I, I know you don't. No, you don't. Matter of fact, I'm so sure you don't know the Lord's Prayer, I'll bet you $10 on it. And old Methodist said, you own and he said, go ahead on. The old Methodist looked up and said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. What do you think about that? The old Baptist said, man, I ain't think you had it in you. Here's your $10. That's how some of us are, amen. We think we know something. And God says you need to get some facts, amen, not some fiction. Matter of fact, remind me also, can I just give you another one here? Remind me also of the pastor who finally went to the little boy's, fifth grade boy's Sunday school class. Went to the fifth grade boy's Sunday school class and he said today we're going to find out who knocked down the walls of Jericho. And all the boys went. And he said, who knocked down the walls of Jericho? Nobody knows who knocked down the walls of Jericho. He says, I didn't do it. <laughs> so one little boy said, I didn't do it. He said, I can't believe y'all don't know who knocked down the walls of Jericho. Preacher was so upset, he was transitioning from Sunday school to morning preaching time. He met one of the deacons in the hallway, and he said, he said, brother so-and-so, do you believe I was in the fifth grade boy's Sunday school class, and I was talking to him about who knocked down the walls of Jericho, and they didn't know who knocked down the walls of Jericho. None of them said a thing. Matter of fact, they started saying, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. And the deacon said, pastor, if they said they didn't do it, I know their families, they didn't do it. It's time to get some good doctrine. Amen. Most kids don't even know who Adam and Eve are anymore. But when you start asking about something going on today in the world, some progressive statement of doctrine, they can tell you all about that. 
So how about you and I decide something here today? We're going to intentionally get our young people to this church so they can get some good education from the word of God. Amen. How about number three? We still good? This is one I think is very important. But I, think, I don't think God put it first on purpose. Because God wants people to get right. Amen. God wants people to start growing. But then God says something is definitely necessary. Do you remember over in the book of Genesis? Where God looked at Adam and he said these words to him in Genesis chapter 2. It's not good for the man to be alone. It's amazing to me how many people say, I don't need all of that. As a matter of fact, I, there was somebody used to always say, say to me, it don't take all that. No, it don't take all that, but we need that. Yeah. Matter of fact, the majority of people, majority of people, they lying to themselves to say, I, listen, I, I'm good to go home and be by myself. But that's not the way the Bible teaches it. Are you still with me? Acts 2.42, and they continue steadfastly in apostle doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers you know what God just said to us God says you and I need to understand that our life, lives are supposed to melt together yeah. melt together now that doesn't mean we're going to all like matter of fact my wife likes purple you know that or red and I like blue but when my wife tells me that she wants me to have on some purple, uh, I'll put it on. When she wants me to wear something red, I'll take and get a tie. When she wants me to wear something pink, I'll wear a shirt. But the truth of the matter is, as you can see, I always try to wrap it up in blue. Because <laughs> the truth is, we live together. And if we live, listen to me now. If we live to letter together, hopefully our lives are growing together. We are better together. And God said there was the fellowship and there was the breaking of the bread and there was the prayer. God is saying, please understand, a church is supposed to have a life together where we live together so we can become better together. But don't forget about something. What's that? Not only do we have a life where we live together, but we have a Lord that we love together. Amen. You and I need to decide something here today, that we want fellowship with the Lord. I understand about many people with different things, views on breaking the bread, but here's one of the good ones, I think, right here. Revelation 3 and verse 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. I think God is trying to teach us together. Let's open up the door of the church. I say of the church. And let's learn to love him together a little bit more. Somebody say amen. amen. And when we take and live together and we love the Lord together, we can maybe get our loads lifted together. Amen. The Bible said there was prayers. There was prayers. The Bible says in James 5 verse number 60, I'm done. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Isn't it good when we have our prayer time on Wednesday nights? Prayer times where we can lift up what's going on. Now understand, I hope you take it with you past Wednesday night. Because people are expecting and needing you to pray for them. And I hope that you are praying. Let me just close by saying this. We get better together. What happens when we finally get together? What makes it so much better? Because our strength is better. Our strength is better. My son and I, we one time, we used to lift weights in the garage. He got to a place where he couldn't lift weights anymore. He was getting tired and getting old. And he <laughs> I'm glad he was because I didn't want to tell him how tired and old I was getting. Come on now. But we did. We lift weights together. And sometimes we both be lifting and get that last, especially one on bench press, try to get that last one up. And we just couldn't get it up. So what the other one would do would be him or be it me. We'd reach down, put our hands on it. And with the strength of both, we could get it up. Maybe sometime not just once. Maybe if you say, if you say one more time, let it down, kind of a second one. Sometimes, get to, I'm serious now, sometimes you can do three. 
The truth of the matter is this, is that all I'm trying to say is this, we are better together, our strength is more together, and what we've got to decide here today, I want to be as strong as I can be, and I can't be strong by myself, but together, amen. amen. It helped me to fight off the old devil, get over the, uh, the sin in my life, take and give Satan a black eye. It helped me to live by the scriptures of God's word. I am stronger when you are there with me, again, provoking one another to love. And good works. Let me tell you what else happened when we would lift those weights. And you try to do them by yourself. <laughs> what happened is, you know what I'm talking about there, Ray Ray? You know what I'm saying, Christopher? You start doing this. He said, Preacher, what is that? When we got together, it brought stability. Yeah. Dear God, thank you for your word. I got strength and I got some stability. It made me be able to handle it a whole lot better. Man, I'm telling you, I wasn't fainting along the Come on, somebody. Thank God when we get together, the strength that God gives and the stability that God gives. Somebody say, I can't make it on my own. You don't have to make it on your own. You've got the Lord on your side. But he's giving your brothers and sisters to help you bear it out. Amen. We are better. Together. And then watch this now. Whenever we get together, my son and I, this is just lifting weights. Think about the church. Think about the strength and think about the stability. And then here's what the last thing that would come. When you get that final one up and you put it down on the bar, the bar on the, on, on, on the, on the brace, you go, yeah. Say, preacher, what was that? It's called spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, I mean you go, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, every time somebody walks down the aisle and you know you've been praying and you know you've been going and you know you've been sharing, hey, guess what? When one more soul walk down the aisle, you don't just sit there. You go, yeah, hey man. It brings spirit to the church when the church is living together. Can I ask you a question? Would you make sure our church keeps moving forward together? But you help us to be everything God wants us to be. Matter of fact, and this is just a start. I can't wait to where God, if he let me do it, preach from Acts chapter 5. Because the Bible says over there, and they filled Jerusalem. You know how they did it? Together. <laughs> Praise God. God is saying something can happen when you and I just do it. Not by ourselves. Don't be a loner. Don't be somebody out there on the outside all the time just looking in, see what's happening, waiting for something bad to happen. Be there to help us, strengthen us, stabilize us, and give us spirit. And when something bad happens, guess what? We got the Savior. The sins he forgave me of in the past, he still can do it in the present and in the future. When we do it together. When we don't look to try to beat somebody down. Break their spirit. We don't try to let them know. Listen, you got to bear it by yourself. Matter of fact, God says when somebody sins, you and I who are spiritual are supposed to restore such a one. You know what that means? Bring them back in the family so we can be better together. Father, thank you so much.